Okay. All right, everybody. Welcome back. We are back with some Metroid Prime. I've seen I've seen run, this run a few times, but uh, without further ado, good luck to you. Sure, get this loaded up. Are we gonna do intros? Yeah, sure. Let me do intro. So uh, I'm Zenmi, um, Twitch channel Zenmista, um, and with me is uh, Bash Prime. Hello. And Thanks. I'm Blood. Hi. Thanks All to right. your generous uh, donations. Uh, Twenty-one percent will be run today. No. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um. So, are you ready for the countdown? Countdown, three, two, one, and go. All right, so starting right RNG off the bat, um, I'm going to I'm going to be talking about a few movement uh, tech things. So the biggest one is called scan dashing. Um, so this game does not have any uh, uh, sideways speed cap. So what you're going to notice is me locking onto something and doing what's called a scan dash off it. So, for example, off the ship. And basically the idea is, you, in the game, you're normally supposed to be able to combat dash, and you just get a burst of speed to the side, but then you quickly stop. However, if you let go of L, um, within a few, fr like, within about a quarter of a second after, uh, um, after you input the strafe dash. Yeah, and after That's you input the strafe mechanic. dash. Yeah, thank you. Um, then you'll get a dash. Yeah, it sort of reverts to how the game calculates your momentum, like how you just slow you down when you're normally just like traveling through the air. Yeah. So because you have this big burst of speed, you slow down a lot slower than you, or you don't even slow down, you just keep going at the same speed unless you're going forward or backwards. Yeah, so we kind of have, there's kind of like a hierarchy in terms of speeds and things. So there's right walking, um, L jumping, which I'll describe a little bit later, um, morph ball rolling, scan dashing, and boost ball is the fastest. Yeah, scan dashing also gives you like one of the fastest forms of movement. Um, and also with this, the reason the scan buys are so important too, is that it gives you many more lock on or places to lock on. Whereas with like the the other visors, you just lock on the enemies or like you know other things like uh, mechanical locks and stuff like that that you have to destroy. All right. So yeah, what I'm trying to do here is there's an elevator I'm trying to avoid, and what you can do is you can jump on a spot, hold the direction on the control stick, and then flick it to the other side, and you just um, clip right up onto the uh, onto that platform and you can skip the elevator. Yeah, they used to do a really hard double bomb jump, but we don't have to do that anymore. I just I took the elevator and just would just go about you know. Do the jack strat. <laughs> I think I did that up to my 109 or something like that. And then Cody comes around and just changes his frigate forever. Alright, let's see if we can get a, get this pirate to break dance. Oh, oh come stopped. on. Nope. Come on. Uh, we, yeah, we just... Alright, so I'm just going to take a safety save here real quick, because if I make a mistake on this one, uh, this upcoming trick, I, I'd have to reset the entire run, so... You're not doing an inbounds like the good people? On one, uh, no. Why would I do that? I, Cause screw RTA. <laughs> Alright, so if you hold C up, and then what basically happens is you can refresh your, the uh, amount of time it takes to shoot a missile, and just shoot Parasite Queen in the face a bunch of times. And well, that force is not working nicely with you. Look, the timer for that started earlier than it should have. Oh. That's my fault. Uh, my stream had double. My stream audio was coming up through my uh, through my desktop. Sorry about that. All right. So there's a corner and a few rooms that if you are morphing in a very specific spot, um, it'll, the game will actually reposition you out of bounds. Um, and this is gonna allow us to do what's called out of bounds uh, movement called wall crawling. Um, I'm gonna let Bash and Blow talk about this because I need to focus. So uh, every room is inside a box. <laughs> yeah, out of bounds is kind of weird in, in the Prime trilogy. Uh, the mechanics work almost exactly the same across all three games. 
Um, yeah, so you see here, it's not a, it's actually kind of a commitment to go out of bounds because you can't just like, it's not a free form of movement. Um, there's a lot of things you have to keep in mind and keep track of as you're like, especially if you're trying to wall crawl fast. Like for example, you can only like pretty consistently stand on the seams of objects. So it's almost like an invisible platform, but if you're too far to one side, you fall down, and if you're too far on the other side, you get stuck. You won't be able to like jump or move. So yeah. you know what Venmi did right there with the sideways movement and jumping, um, she's abusing the, the bounding boxes around the rooms. Uh, each room has a bounding box that surrounds it that more or less matches the room's collision. So um, for instance, like this curved hallway has like a box that'll have, be a little bit more wide on the left side. Um, when you're playing the game normally and you're inbounds, you're always in that bounding box. And the way that the game handles like stuff like gravity and jumping as long as you're in the bounding box you can jump but you can also fall down you can't do either when you're out of it um but we can abuse this mechanic by constantly going in, in and out of this bounding box doing what's called aether jumping and uh you can sort of gain height then quickly leave the bounding box and then just keep your uh height that you gained from your jump and then input another jump that was solid. Right. and we just I mean, let the frigate way faster than normal it's only there's also Mari's. Oh yeah, yeah. We we didn't lose our items, except we will. Yeah, so there's double two item spots. Lost. There's two spots where you can lose your items. The first one's in the cutscene, um, when you, you scan the cut or you scan the elevator. Um, I skipped that. However, there's another trigger as you land on Talon Four, so there's currently no way to actually skip losing your item. Yeah, you'd have to find a way to like warp to like a different room instead. All right, so. Coming up, what I'm going to be doing is uh, is a scan down to the right, and it seems very minimal, but it's going to allow me to get space jump early, and this is going to be able to skip a huge amount of the game, or a huge amount of content in the game, speed everything up in the early game a lot. Oh, come on. Oh, uh, yeah, they didn't get that much speed from the dash. Yeah, space jump's just the one of the be the best item in Prime for speedrunning. It's just not just a little jump. Makes your dashes go farther. Your you can R jump with it, which is another trick that uh then we'll showcase later in the run. Yeah. So, um, actually, what space jump does is besides giving you two jumps, it increases the vertical uh, velocity cap. So your overall jumps will go a little higher than they w normally would without space jump. And also, when you bomb and unmorph, you'll go way higher. Yes. You're, now your the height you gain while you're in morph ball doesn't change, but when you as soon as you unmorph, it does. Little minute things like that. It's really that really is more significant for when you're doing like a low percent run. All right. So normally when you come to Chozo, the first thing you do is go for missile launcher, um, so you can go get morph ball right after. Um, I'm going to get a missile, but it's not missile launcher. It's the best missile in the game. It's this missile right here. Because I have space jump, I can just go right up and get it. And the only difference between a, um, a, a missile launcher and a missile expansion is a, is a cutscene. That's it. So I have fully functioning missiles. Also, I'm getting this energy tank because, you know, I want to make sure I don't die. Yeah, don't there's actually a lot of potential to take damage uh, early on in this game. One is from the scarabs here. Um, unless you're in Morphal, they're taking to essentially a lot of damage to you, so you want to hit them as minimally as possible. That was really good, actually. Like, oh, that was really good health. I'm. I didn't. Oh, I just, I just, I just, I oh. just saw that. Anyway, yeah, you it's can not a big just deal. Dash over that. Um, however, I screwed up what's a technique called the double jump dash. I don't and... even do the double jump dash. I just uh. Do a regular scan dash over it. Yeah, me too. But I think the double jump ba dash is faster and more elite players use it. So. Yeah. Basically, what a double jump dash is, you press B twice before letting go of L, and um, it allows you to get more speed. However, not as much distance. You're gonna see uh, Venmi also stick to morph ball more towards during hallways. Um, morph ball just travels faster than walking. I think it's like about twice as fast. Yeah, it's like 20 speed. Yeah, walking is around like a le like a just a bit below a 12 speed, I think. Um, I believe that L jumping is faster, but in curved tunnels, it's yes. set up an L jump. <clears throat> also, the reason Venmi paused, uh, opened the map earlier was just to abuse 
the way that the game auto loads some rooms in the game and it saves on both in game time and rta yeah what happens is there's some rooms that won't open until every adjacent room is loaded um so what happened was i paused there and for some reason i have no idea why um the game will just open up that room because it was already loaded And using space jump to go through these rooms a lot faster. It's trivial. I mean, space jump isn't even that like late game of an item, but it get, having it as your first upgrade is just insane. Yeah, it's normally like it's just a gigantic seven. secret break for the early game. It's seven. You're, you're not yes. supposed to get it until after boost ball. Which it's, it's one of the it's the second upgrade you basically get after various suit. <clears throat> First one, well, boost ball is, but uh, oh, you're talking about space, space jump right? second, yeah, yeah, okay. So, there's gonna be a uh, safe station door that I shoot. This is gonna be extremely important later on. I gotta make sure, yeah, I... you don't want to oh, miss the Did store. I really fall there? Oh, that's fine. Oh, uh, I've been I've been getting caught by, by that ledge for whatever reason, it just won't let me actually stand there. Yeah, Prime's had it out for us lately, I think. That ledge is especially annoying without a space jump because the double bomb jump makes you want to go towards the door, so you miss it all the time. Yeah, I have a. I, I just recently uploaded a run on YouTube called Metroid Prime Any Percent in this or in this game hates me. Just you'd have to watch it. <laughs> um. All right. So coming up, this boss is random in terms of when his weak points pops up. It has up to 35 seconds of variance, and we can thank. Um, one of the senior developers for that, uh, David yep. Zoid Kirsch, um, he actually said in a Skype call that he liked the randomness of some of these aspects. So both this and the power bomb made of his creation. Yeah, I can blame him being a software engineer because I would say the exact same thing if I was like working on a game like this. Man, I would have said the opposite. <laughs> so in, this is Incinerator Drone. We call him Zoid because of uh, aforementioned senior uh, software engineer Zoid. The David Kirsch goes by Zoid. Um, so the first phase can take anywhere from 8 to 13 seconds to pop up, and then phases 2 through 4 can take either anywhere from 15 to 25, so then that adds up to a, a potential up to 35 seconds of time loss. Usually it's not too bad, like you'll probably, on average, lose about like 10 to 15 seconds. Yeah, it's definitely not the worst time loss in the game. They can hear us, right? Yeah. Also, yeah, shouts to iDog Film for saying unskippable cutscenes. <laughs> no, I'm just reading the Discord message, that's all. Oh, okay. Yeah, I realize how important those War Wasps are in Hundo. Because when in 100%, I just did my first 100% run in like a year yesterday. That was not good. Uh, yeah, that's, that took a while. That, that was time. Oh, well. Awful. Besides, there's really not that much RNG. Or you know, luck based like time loss to deal with in a, in a run. Um, there's like I, oh, I would say like there's two yeah, more buddy. major points in any percent, and those are like around the like two thirds of the way in. Yeah. <clears throat> Were you trying to go for the uh, one frame? By the way, I did. <laughs> I didn't hear the button mashing, so I was like, wait, she did right? I'm not sure. It's it doesn't slower. even save you time. Like you can, yeah, it's slower. it's actually slower. There's one frame that you can unmorph between cutscenes. There's one frame you can do any action between cutscenes. Really. You forgot the puzzle. No, I'm not doing the puzzle. So yeah, there's a puzzle there to open up a door, um, and I'm not doing that at all. And you'll find out why later. I'm also getting this. Yeah, it's to, because it opens a locked door that gains access when playing normally to like the second half of Chosen Ruins. I mean, you're still locked by not having Spider Ball or like Wave Beam, so it's not like we could do much there unless you went out of bounds. In an older route, we would actually do the IPVF wall crawl right away to get Ice Beam um, in 100%. Beam yeah, Ice Beam for Pelagra, which is so the again, boss coming up that blocks space jump. Along you to go through this room ridiculously quick. Yeah, it's a combination of both space jump and just there's a lot of terrain that you can actually stand on that doesn't look like you can stand on it. No glitch is needed, you can just stand on it, like, it's just the way that the game thinks you can stand on stuff. Yeah, I believe if you destroy the War Wasp Hive, like, it's way more difficult to do that, though. 
Yeah, I think you're you're right on there. Okay, I shot a missile there because I don't want to have full missile starting this fight. Um, when you damage Flagra, um, Flagra will drop items, and if Flagra drops all missiles, then those missiles won't appear if you have full missiles. Does it affect the, like uh, how easy it is to, to, or what angle you want to scan dash off of? Or It's just the fact that they're all missiles and you don't have anything to dash off of besides the vine. Oh, really? Yeah. Actually, I didn't realize that. <clears throat> yeah, that's why people shoot missiles if they have 15 or 10. You know, uh, I've always just shot a missile just to make sure I get the drop, but that makes sense. Wow. Yeah, so if you have less than 15, if you have less than 15 missiles, um, or, you know, less than max missiles, if you have less than max, then you should be fine. So this fight's actually really fast for in-game time, but it's about two minutes of cutscenes. Yeah. I think like the task is like 13 seconds for this whole fight. Um, normally what you're supposed to do is shoot these like mirror dishes, and uh, as you go through each phase of the fight, there's four total, you have to shoot like one additional mirror, so up to four mirrors you have to shoot down to like <clears throat> knock out Flogger, and then it'll open up the tunnels, then you go in, go to the bomb slot, then hit it. Um, these bomb slots are not like normal bomb slots where you have to actually like go inside it in Morphal. They're just normal damage triggers, so as long as you lay a bomb, or like next bomb. to it, close enough, or power bomb in this case, or in, in like the task case, um, you can still damage Flogger without having to do the whole actual fight. So it's just completely broken, and then space jump just makes things a lot nicer and faster. It can right. be done without space jump, but it's not... goodbye, Flugster. A great plant, well lived. <clears throat> Funny enough, in randomizer, you can actually see what items spawned, like during the cutscene where like the water starts to cleanse. Doesn't really matter though, because it's rando. <laughs> rando is just child speed. Another running. thirty seconds of cutscene, by the way. <laughs> For speed run. So this is very suit another like minute long cutscene, I think. It's thirty six or thirty five seconds or something. Oh, it's only thirty five. My bad. Yeah, it's thirty something seconds. Okay, yes. Yeah, the reason we're mentioning, like, in-game time versus RTA so much is because Metroid Prime is one of the few games where it, it's still run for in-game time. It's still an older game that runs for in-game time that's not on PC. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the times PC games will go in-game time because, you know, different people... Factors in... Speeds yeah, like SSDs PCs. versus hard drives, loading times differ. But it's oh, also much easier is, to hook into like the timer and stuff like that, like you know. Well, let me explain the trick. Real quick. Parts of so, memory. What's coming up is I'm is there's a room coming up that I'm going to be hitting trigger uh, that changes the layer of the room I was just in earlier fighting Flagra, so that way I can fight the ghost instead for uh, Artifact of Wild. Yeah, this is invisible plane right here. Oh, I can shut up actually. Hold on. No, go ahead and talk. All right, so what Vemis is doing here is an infinite bomb jump. One of the few you actually do, you can actually do in this game. Um, it's actually kind of a miracle to see even works. Um, we don't have spire ball, so we can't just quickly spire ball back up. And if you fall all the way to the bottom, there's no way to get back up without even spire ball. Period. Um, so if you like just rub up against the wall and hold like up left on the control stick, you can slow your descent down enough so where you can lay bombs infinitely, and then just. Uh, bomb your boy back up and then unmorph back onto the ledge. Huge, yes, huge yeah, time true. saver. This is huge for any percent. Another big sequence break because you're not expected to come back here until after you uh, get both. Uh, you basically defeat Thardis, which is. Uh, you need super missiles and Spider Ball. Yeah, you can do it with just Spider Ball, but it's a ridiculously hard bomb jump. And I think Zlo actually had gone it for the first time not too long Zlo ago. Got it recently, yeah. yeah, I still I haven't. I I've, never I've never tried it. I've done it a few times, both MSJ and yeah. Space Jump. So this ghost it's fight not... can be a bit of a pain. Um, they yeah, like just... to disappear on you. Yeah, and you can stun lock them by... But you can stun lock them, thankfully, with the charge beam when they're about to, like, uh, disappear on you. Yep, this is free time loss. Yeah. <laughs> I hate this game sometimes. That, that At least 100% is a lot more satisfying, even if you don't have that Oh, I love it fight. when charge shots miss ghosts. Oh, yeah. So great. 
the game is a slight auto aim that like even when you're locked on it'll affect like the trajectory even the trajectory of the beams that, that I fire. Know. yeah and so since the ghosts move so much when they're charging up attacks sometimes it'll just throw your auto aim way off yeah well plus they're mob they're you know they're they're bending like their their torsos and stuff like that yeah. um like they're very animated like characters actually but it doesn't like it kind of throws off what you're actually locked onto and then because projectiles don't have large hitboxes, they're actually pretty precise. That's why the lock-on system kind of exists, period, in addition to this being a single-stick shooter. So it's pretty easy to miss oh, your shot sometimes. That wasn't, that wasn't oh, you missed the cutscene overlap? Yeah, I missed the cutscene overlap. No, not the RTA! Well, it's also an in-game time too. Does it really? Oh man, that's big. <laughs> Sorry. So that's the artifact of Wild, also known as Early Wild. Um, it's been a hugely important trick for 8% for since I think long since 8 has been run. It was actually discovered like a long time ago too, but um, if I'm not mistaken, I don't so know when it was discovered. Like Doesn't Space Jump first was discovered in 2003, I think. Yep. One so now that we're done here, here, also slight time save bombing that door so that uh, it'll stay open so you can just roll through, not the unwork and shoot the door, the door at all or lay a bomb. <clears throat> Shout nice out to that movie. elevator. <laughs> um, doesn't right. the doesn't watching the ice beam cutscene save like eight seconds or it something saves, really negligible? It saves like point that? six. Or, or yeah, 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 it's like three fifths of a second. Anyway, I meant to say eight um, frames. Coming up is <laughs> so there's an artifact coming up that um, the way you're kind of intending to go about it is um, you see it with X ray visor later on and then you shoot missile at it. However, you can... It actually... Come on. Nice dash. Um, it has damage oh, value nice. on it, so you can just shoot two missiles at it. Yeah, I never saw, like, any documentation saying, oh, you need supers for this, but I I always assumed you needed supers, too, for this yeah. one artifact. But it's supposed to be, like, one of those, wait, it, like, this has been here the whole time, like, you have x-ray visor, you see it, it's like, oh, okay. But, yeah, there's nothing preventing you from getting it as soon as you Go into Magmar for the first time. Yeah, I believe when you scan it. Or the same thing is for uh, missile expansion in uh, an, an upcoming room that we're not going to worry about because it's really for Hundo, not for any percent. Which one? There's like another pillar in Triclops Pit where you're about to go into. Oh yeah, that one. <clears throat> yeah, they're in the enemies in right now. This is like a pillar on her right that she could destroy with the missile. I think like I also was like, oh, I need supers for this. No, I you just need one missile for that one. Yeah, there's a lot of things like that in this game where you're like, oh, super missiles are what does this. You know? it's a nice puffer. Right? Man. Yeah, so monitor station's kind of weird. You're expected to like kind of travel through like the center of it, kill the turrets and stuff, but uh, then we just did what's called a ghetto jump, where you gain height um, by jumping off a slope, and then so you can just she can just jump on like the the outer walls of the room and then just climb her way to the door. Actually, I don't think that one requires a ghetto. I'm not sure. Oh, I just I do the ghetto strat. <laughs> Yeah, um, I've done it without nice. a Nice. Oh, what the <laughs> heck? Yo, time save. That what? happened when I was going for 59. Like, when I was going for sub hour. That's, that's incredible. I've before. never seen that's that. That's the second time I've, se I've seen that. Um, yeah, sometimes this game, we get stuck on collision because it's a good game. <laughs> Can I interject with one really mean -y thing to say? Sure. What is it? That's never happened before. <laughs> All right. So there's a cutscene coming up that I can skip. However, I'm going to wait until Samus is actually moving forward a bit. What this does is saves about a second of um, in-game time because you're, the game has automatically pushed you forward. Yeah, there's a lot of cutscenes where the, Samus is actually like repositioned. So, well, the, the cutscene started right when Vemi went through the door, so she was right next to it. But then, when it switches to Samus walking, she's immediately pushed like several feet forward. Oh, by the way, I'm doing uh, what's called an R-dash here. You can maintain your speed uh, by holding the R button instead of letting go of L. And that actually allows you to keep keep your aim on the lock-on so you can dash again off the same point. So if you're not within a spot where you can actually uh, lock on again, um, you can just dash off it um, even though you're not, you can't technically see it because the lock-on will stay persistent. Yeah, the lock R button's kind of interesting when it comes to like moving through the air. Yeah. Um, that was in, clean. 
In Metroid Prime 2, R dashing is actually the only way to scan dash. Yeah, they patched out how they patched out like the sideways speed cap and like just being able to move sideways really fast. All right, so now I have boost ball. Boost ball movement is actually a lot more like to move fast with boost ball is actually a lot more difficult than it seems. At first. Yeah, you can sort of chain boost together and just build up a lot of speed, but sometimes, like you'll just get caught on something and not be able to put, put in a boost at the right time. Yeah, you gotta make but sure. You can move extremely like... fast if you're if you're good enough. Also, if you're not holding a direction while boosting, you have no speed cap. So coming up is uh. Why'd you fall off? <gasps> I don't know. Just kidding. Yeah, you get repositioned. Um. Oh, by the way, <laughs> shout out to really shadow being twice as large as Ridley. And I think his model in this cutscene is like light blue to match the sky. Yep. Yeah, just a completely different model. Um, so coming up is the one out of bounds that I I do personally, called Wave Sun. So one of the easiest ways to go out of bounds actually in this is just do an R dash um, while locked on. Yeah, I don't know how you guys do that Secret World. Uh, I do it the way where you just stand at the one corner and just L. Or a scan dash. Oh, I just I I just stand in like where Ben me is, and then you literally just input you the dash, dash and hold R. You don't not, have to you don't have to do that. anything. You don't have to bend it. Because uh, it looks like you guys land on something else, and then uh, scan dash over mm -hmm. to it. So again, with out of bounds stuff, I am standing in very specific spots. Yeah, you can see the seams you're standing on. Um, you also like stick to walls on the outside, and can just also move up that way. I like this hard jump a lot when it works. Yeah. I, I, I was sweat though. Oh, that was kind of... Yeah, sometimes the ceiling can like sort of cancel out how much height you gain. But the whole I reason we're doing this out of bounds too... Alright, so this upcoming nice, trick, good. I'm gonna be... The game thinks I'm in the room between this one and um, Chapel of the Elders, which has a... Uh, yeah, that gate that just opened thinks... So the game thinks she's in that room. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm if this actually works. There we go. All right, so what's happening right now is I'm stuck in a corner, so I'm just building up speed right now. And what happens is it goes fast, you know, she gains speed exponentially up until the point where her speed value exceeds the max of 32-bit floating number, which is roughly around 2.1 billion. And for one frame, um, it goes to a negative value and then changes to a value called not a number. And when you boost using this value called not a number, um, it has you um, it has you hit multiple actors at once. Um, in yeah, this case, up. the two important ones are the wave beam and the artifact of sun, which is why we call it the trick wave sun. And the yeah. cutscene, and it hit no. both cutscenes. That's yeah. why this trick can be done entirely in bounds too. So in the, you have, you'd have to do the Shigoth fight though, get wave beam and then do the IS to get early sun. Um, so it's about like thirty five seconds slower, but it can be done completely in bounds too. This is just the out of bounds method to skip the fight. Oh, and I let the cutscene play out there so that way the um, Shigoth should spawn, so I have an easy dash point. Yeah, another gigantic it's sequence break in this done. game. You yeah, need you normally need plasma. You. Yeah, normally you need plasma you to come back and melt the ice when that one shows those statue's hands, and then it, for some reason, holds your morph ball and lowers it, and then it triggers a wall to disappear. It's actually faster 100% to come back with plasma beam, because you don't have to spend a minute just building up speed. Yeah. The yeah, evidence speed's actually a really simple trick. As long as you get the setup proper, um, all you have to do once you're, like, <clears> once, the, once the morph ball is, like, in a spot where it can like freely rotate without any friction um you just hold direction for like 55 seconds yeah yeah it's uh very obvious when you get infinite speed versus when you're just spinning in a direction because the uh morph ball ends up spinning so fast that it only shows like two frames of the spinning so it looks like the morph ball just stops spinning yeah it's like it's like if you have a camera like a video camera and you see like a helicopter spoke or like a the spokes on like a car move yeah, yeah, and it yeah, looks yeah. like they're not moving at all because of the frame rate of the camera. That's kind of the analogy I use. It's <clears throat> a good analogy. But again, it's yeah, actually speeding really fast. Billion, so. 
Yeah, we're basically doing the hard large hadron collider with the morph ball. <laughs> yeah, fun fact, uh, for anyone who doesn't know about 32-bit float numbers, that's actually what YouTube used until Darude Sandstorm got over 2.1 billion views and completely crashed the site. <laughs> so now they go off 64-bit, and in order to hit 64-bit, you're gonna need to have 65 or so quintillion views. Yeah, it doesn't double that. the number, it's all exponential, so it's checking. Literally consider it. Yeah, so the enemies make your way back to Talon, uh, or really actually to Chozo, but um, just grabbing the one uh, artifact on the way to clean up uh, that first half of Magmore. We're also not seeing that first half of either Magmore or uh, Fendrana again. Yeah, so say bye. Bye. The infinite speeds are kind of a, it's a more, it's a pretty, it's weird how it works, but it's also um, a committal tr trick to, uh, it's not as much for Wave Sun because you immediately get put in a cutscene, but um, we'll talk, I'll talk about it later because there's another instance of infinite speed that will be done in about, I want to say five minutes. Something like that. Hence the term double IS route for oh, this uh, particular route. Yeah, it's probably my favorite trick in the game, but we don't get to do it very often. Yeah. Shouts to Remy, and I, I forget who who did, if it was Hazel or someone else who actually did the, the timing. Um, Remy hated the bar skip for the uh, previous route. Oh, that Zoomer sucks. Room is painful. Shout out to Zoomers. Yeah, this jump that Vemi's making, uh, just to skip going around. Like, it's it's precise, but it's not that bad, but it's just dumb. Is it, how long does it save? Cause it saves like that... two seconds, maybe? <laughs> It doesn't save much time at all. I usually don't miss it. Yeah, I don't think I've ever even gone for it. Like, I do the second... A long time, just saying. Okay. I do the second jump, but I don't do the first one, because... just doesn't yeah. feel worth it. I, that was one of the last things I put in, put in, was like that root cave jump. Because I, I just got screwed by it so many times. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take the two-second time loss. I don't care. By the way, I'm really impressed with how this run's going. You're actually, like, playing really clean for the most part. Like, not much has been going wrong this run. Oh, and like, smash the record. Oh. <laughs> we, won't, we won't talk about that ever again. No, we won't. Alright, so, you're normally supposed to have Spider Ball and, or to get over to this upcoming room in order to get the Artifact of Life Giver. However, I'm just going to stand on this branch and dash over. Yeah, you don't even need to dash either. There's, there's like four ways to get up to this, this door here. And, and right. none of them require oh, spider ball. Shoot. Good game. In fact, not all of them require space jump. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, so we mentioned ghetto jumping earlier, which is just getting or uh, getting extra height by jumping against the slope. That gets amplified underwater, allowing you to get up here. Yeah, you uh, get huge amounts of height with you underwater with ghetto. Also, a goodbye uh, gravity suit requirement for the run. That was like one of the first things skipped. Yeah, this is like the only actual like requirement for like like needing gravity suit. There's nothing else really hard blocked by like needing gravity. Yeah, unless you're doing like a rando or something. Well, besides like the space pirate frigate, but even then you yeah. can get everything in there without gravity suit. You it's can? just a major that pain in the butt. So painful. You, actually you can actually get, get through. Uh, gravity suits. The, uh, there's a there's an energy tank. That you can't get without gravity suit because you're stuck in the room. Oh, uh, you actually can. You can I boost, believe. I think, right? No, you can do the um, you can deload the water in the room. Um, Whiskers did it, and um, so now, because LV is trying to run a meme route called 2100%, where you get as many uh, expansions as possible under 21% conditions. 21% being low percent, by the way. So here's um, a, yeah, this is the second instance of uh, IS in the run we're going to see here. Oh, and this one takes even longer because the room lags. Yeah, it's 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 no it lost in game time because it's just you know there's no the timer is tied to the frame rate too. Yeah, but uh, you can save like two seconds of RTA if you just hold boost. Yeah, which but usually during this time I like to check Twitter or something. <laughs> Fair enough. Because this is such a boring section of the run. Or, I, you know, I try to talk more in the chat. I can actually look at Yeah, chat. I feel bad for calling it boring because it's actually pretty chill, like, when you're actually the runner. Because there's really chill. no risk of dying. Even though there's still enough technical stuff to keep things interesting to me, at least. But <clears throat> Also, the reason we're going here, by the way, there at the other side of the lava is a powerbomb expansion that's blocked by a powerbomb wall that you have to destroy with a powerbomb. 
Um, with infinite speed, we can just get that expansion. Yeah. Um, without any issues, we just need to um, take a detour to get X-ray, which X-ray visor is extremely important for a future boss fight. Yeah, this um, is like the other big sequence break in the run. All right. In my practice run, I almost fell in the wall. I get a little nervous trying before I uh, boost. Yeah, if you fall into the lava, you're basically screwed. All right, yeah, so, um, so right here, I'm going to unmorph. Um, what just happened? Oh no, we're okay. Um, so there's a there's this um, side effect of infinite speed called light show. So when you unmorph, you get those weird lights. Um, and that's basically the way your camera's going to be, unless you're in a spot with a scripted camera, which in front of that um, fountain is where there's a scripted camera. Now, the only way to get rid of this is by getting Samus repositioned via cutscene. So, for example, the save station, which is the reason why I shot that door a lot earlier. Yeah. yeah. And if you're not you... necessarily soft locked. You can you take the elevator, but it's a lot slower. Yeah. Uh, I think that happened in the first run of mine that Bash watched. I uh, forgot to shoot the door, and he yelled at me for not pausing, and then told me to go to the elevator. <laughs> All right. So what I'm doing is I'm using a slope jump to get out of bounds here. Um, wow, that was this good. Is the famous uh, ice beam vlogger trick. Okay, ice I got a little nervous when you did that jump. After vlogger. I know we just walk out into the aether and be like, yeah, I'm take it safe. That's DF strat, by the way. Oh my god, that's so good. It's so clean. Yeah, so normally you like inbounds. Um, this isn't so the actual wall crawl itself is not that much faster than than inbounds when done properly or done optimally. But um, there's another trick coming up called go skip at the end of the run. That is the major time saver for uh, this route. Yeah. But the whole re the whole reason we're doing this out of bounds is because. Van me didn't unlock the door in energy core, so energy core in addition to being uh, able to do ghost skip later on. <laughs> what was going on with that wall there? Ooh, I don't know. Wall collision. Let's not talk about that. Literally yeah, and you'll see Van me jumping in specific spots and like morphing, for instance, to land on certain spots. That's to hit load triggers to unload the previous room and load the next room. Great. And... This is not comfortable at all. Ugh. Uh, the again, reason why has to be on... Oh, sorry. The reason why I slowed down is because it was not going according to what I normally do. So I was just making sure I didn't fall because if you fall, especially in that room. Yeah, you fall all the way down. Oof. Yeah, that all was right. really good. Besides, Besides the... just a little slowness. Little spots that maybe won't almost have a little bit Each of a furnace was a little shaky, but other than that, was good. Uh, All right, so right here, there's one frame where you can get have your beam switch. So if you hold C down here and let this cutscene play out, um, it will start switching over to ice beam immediately, which saves a little bit of time because you can just immediately shoot the door. Yeah, the cutscene just helps buffer it. You can and you won't be able to buffer it if you skip it. Yeah. So that's another instance where letting a cutscene play out saves in-game time at the expense of real time. But we don't care about real time. This route is actually slower in real time because of how many elevators you are taking. It, there's way more elevators in this route than in the uh, the previous route that was ran three years ago. Um, it was actually the route that had the any percent world record for about two and a half, three years at this point. Yeah, T3 had a 53 with that route, and that's an insane time. I thought it was in Magma for a second, which is why it turned left. Probably one of the best speedruns ever of Metroid Prime, to be honest, like of any percent. Yeah, now it's gotten down to what, like 50? 51. 51. But 50 is certainly possible in an RTA setting. So you, can, you can just skip that by jumping up. Oh, and the, yeah. the reason I laid this power bomb down early is because um, to reset the bomb timer. Yeah, you can't lay bombs until the power bomb actually runs out. Shout out to the worst room in the game. This room is terrible. Hopefully you guys don't see why. This room is great. Yeah, this room has weird collision. It'll about. sometimes like to just block you, you on the half pipe. Me. But uh that was clean. It looks like a treat okay. Vemi okay here, so. Yeah, that was actually kind of clean. Heck yeah. 
I feel like I commonly don't have very many issues going through that room. And like maybe like one out of like every like seven runs, I'll have an, a problem. Now you're gonna L lock yeah, spring so... space jump out of this room. All right, so I'll explain no. L lock spring space jump. So <laughs> don't. Um. Please don't. L lock that, spring that... space jump is a trick that was posted on um, Metroid 2002 as a legitimate yeah. trick by saying if you if you put your camera down and then <laughs> let go of R while holding L and you jump doing that, you'll gain increased speed. Bimmy's also getting a Chozo artifact here just to clean up. But here's the thing. L lock spring space jump isn't a thing. It doesn't exist. Yeah, it, it just happens to be if you look down, it's easier just to tell like where the edge of the blade, like the ledge or platform is. Oh, so by you can the just way, get a more precise L jump. Uh, ghost fight here by jumping up here and R jumping across. Yeah, normally you have to climb the room and on the outside, and then it triggers the fight. You have to defeat the ghosts, then it unlocks the way out from the top. So I thoroughly believe in a lock spring space jump, yeah. so I had like a one thirty two. I think I believed it too for a bit. <laughs> It was when I was learning, like, Funga Hall A, I think, without doing the That dash. was the exact same thing that I learned it as. All right. So, basically, the way R jumps work is when you do an L jump and then you pull, you press R, you can actually turn while maintaining your speed and then kind of, like, do a second L jump in midair and you just continue to gain momentum, uh, allowing you to do, to traverse distances that you really shouldn't be able to do. Yeah, the R button, in, in a sense, just it kind of locks your trajectory, but then also allows you to gain even more speed than an L jump. What will happen is if you, like, just L jump again while doing your space jump, your speed reverts back to, like, 11.8, and then you start gaining speed again, potentially, if you, like, turn. But if you have R jump, if you R jump and hold R, and then do R and L when you space jump, um, your speed will lock to where current value it is instead of going back down to 11.8. So you can then build even more speed up from that point when you space jump. So then you get to like, you know, 30 something speed, which is way more than you would with an L jump. Right. But that's at the expense of having complete control over like what your trajectory is. But if you're just jumping in a kind of straighter, slightly curved line, it's perfect for that. Yeah, you usually won't see people um, do that while out of bounds because it is extremely risky. It has the same effect as if you fall off a ledge, which if you fall off a ledge, you lose control of Samus' momentum and you can't really change it. Which is something they thankfully fixed in Echoes. And also, uh, I mean, Bemi had mentioned this earlier, uh, without that power bomb expansion we got with infinite speed, uh, we'd have to go into Mines first, or Pendrana first, to get another uh, power bomb, and then come back mm -hmm. and get an X-Ray. But by getting X-Ray first, it just saves a big backtrack. Oh, whoops. That was a mistake. I accidentally went out the scan visor. <laughs> so, that was an, all the cleanup we needed to do for that, that kind of section. Uh, we will have to come back to Chozo one more time for, like, one last item, but it's on the way to the final bosses anyways, so it's really not that, like, big of a visit. Yeah, it's only like a two-room detour. Yeah, it's a really, really short detour. And every runner has probably forgotten <laughs> to get it at least once in their career and then never forgot it again because... All right, so there. I'm doing a trick. I'm going to be doing an upcoming trick called Bunny Hop. Um, if you are holding L and R um, and then you land on the ground, if you, land, if you press B on the first possible frame, um, you can actually keep all of your speed. I think it's like if it's frame perfect, you gain speed, and then if it's like frame two, you keep all that's, your momentum. That's not true. Um, oh, you never lose mind. Lose speed if it's anything past the first. Yeah. That was clean. And so it's like uh, the third frame is slower than the second frame. Yeah. And then after yeah, that. Yeah, so it's not a frame perfect know. trick, but the more frames, the less speed. Oh, by the way, I'm skipping two spinners here. Yeah. Wait, what? Let's go. Uh oh, I'm a little scared. I want to learn this so bad. Is this the Justin? Are you about to do the Justin? Yeah, I do. Also, that time. first. I just want to just want to mention the, that first lava room that Benmi was in that right after the elevator. Ah. Oh. Okay. Well, this looks like it's okay back up. I guess. I don't know. Oh man, that sucks. Yeah, this isn't going too well. Oh. Yeah, lava's pretty damaging even with phase on suit. 
a lot more damaging than the other Metroid games. So yeah, so the first lava room that, that was right past the elevator that um, we had just come out of, um, I say we like I'm part of this run. Um, normally you need spider ball to traverse it, but uh, there's like four ways to get through them. Like By the three, way, that's two scan But you can also just go in the lava and do a double bomb jump out, so it's not a big skip at all. Like you have to do, you can just even just have bombs and just get out. So that was sloppy, but that's that's an example of skipping that was pretty really much cool. every spinner. How much time does that save over getting the spinners? Oh, uh, you're at the top of the of the spider tracks, so you didn't even get the ghetto. Yeah, so uh, yeah, needing to do the spider puzzle is not even needed. That's like the, the, the a very beginner friendly strat is just jumping on the ledge. Um, yeah, what I did. It's, was... it's not hard to get onto the outer rim of that room and then just jump on the spider tracks. You do like one ghetto jump to get on the first like block, and then you could just jump your way to the door. I'm loving lava today, apparently. That dash was not friendly to you at all. That was weird. The lava? Yeah, but the the, the the cool strat, which is what Vemi was trying to go for, was that little like rod that comes out from the wall when you uh, it's like the first spider track you get onto to start like the the puzzle as you navigate around to get to the door normally. Um, you can like do this ghetto jump off of it, and it's really cool, but it's a precise jump. But it's awesome if you if you're able to stick the landing, or just get you know get enough height to land on it. Period. Yeah. And then the the even if you fail it, you can just land on the out, outer rim and just uh, still get to the door without falling down. Yeah. Um. So coming up, I'm mainly coming here for a few artifacts. Actually, I think it's just for artifacts. Yeah, it's just for artifacts. <laughs> yeah, it's also thermal visor technically, but that's just a nice like bonus. Yeah, it's not really that that one's not required. Yeah, Do you think eventually we'll get desperate enough for time save that we'll skip thermal visor? No. Not for in game time because it loses almost no in game time. Never. If, if the run the, goes to RT, then yes. Yeah, that's wh that's why thermal's always gone in 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 game time runs because it loses almost no in game time. It's like a few seconds. Every yeah, that skip. Pass. So that just skip needing grapple beam to get to the other end of the room. Or no, 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 you don't even need that. You just uh, it's just a faster way of going to the other side. Sorry. Grapple beam is needed for the item that's in that room. Yeah. And then nothing really I too special yeah, besides. Yeah, okay, there is a grapple skip done in this room. To get to the cool. artifact directly. Yep. Yeah. So you skip needing grapple beam. Yeah, that's about it. This room is extremely hard without space jump. I hate it. Garbage without space jump. Yeah. Yeah, I have to do that next in my run. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> I hate it even more than G like it, GGC. I'd rather do than than. Okay, so occasionally you you guys probably notice that when I unmark, you don't see the anim you don't see the animation at all. Um, that's because if there's um if Sam is, if the camera is being obstructed. You can actually get what's called an instant on mark. And that'll actually be pretty useful later on. Yeah, it skips a one like second animation that would play. Yeah. I'm just gonna grab the tank. I also shouts to the second half of this run doing basically everything backwards. Yeah. So this is like the backward the other end of the higher labs. You're usually supposed to go into the front entrance. But we will never see the front entrance. Yeah. Ooh, that was close. Yeah, this room could be rough, especially if you don't have much health. But that was a nice uh, health drop. Yeah, I usually freeze the turrets when I come in. Because... Alright, so I'm looking for a power bomb, which is like a 2 in 7 chance of dropping. And a bunch of oh, yeah, you spots. didn't get that other expansion. <laughs> yeah, power bomb RNG is, or power bomb luck is pretty good for the most part, well, but I'm there's the occasional the run. Tank because I'm, yeah, my safety. health is sketchy. Marathon strats, you know? Shout out to I did me. not hear Edward break the door, so I'm assuming- Or the glass, so I'm assuming he did. Yeah, he-, he Rallybox? Nothing for Rallybox, wow. Yeah, nothing. Alright, Yeah, so, so normally- Oh, sorry, you can explain. Yeah, so, when you come through this room, you're normally supposed to hit this cutscene, then kill this Metroid, and then there's a pirate that comes and breaks the glass. Thankfully, um, if you come in backwards, the pirate will break the glass anyway. However, sometimes, uh, based on movement, you could end up having a not break the glass, and that's no fun. But thankfully, you can yeah. reload the room. 
I don't know what causes it, but I wish I did because it happens to me all the time. I think the power <laughs> movement's always the same. It's on like the same, not timer, but just the pathing or whatever. I think it's like how fast you get to the room and how fast you activate the uh, yeah, I'm still power bomb. AI. Oh, come on. I think I got it. I think I did get a power bomb. Yeah, once you morph, we'll know. Luckily, we'll have to do that soon. Oh my goodness. Also, you don't need you don't need plasma beam at all. You're aiming yeah, way left, I think. I mean, we have it, but that's better. That should be good. You just yeah. jump over that barrier, which is supposed to block you from doing what I just did. Yeah, Venmi has all the items she needs to get this uh, normally, anyways. But it's just faster to just jump over the first field and shoot a missile. Okay, I got a power bomb. Yeah, that's I'm gonna good. Need a power I... bomb a little bit later. So sometimes you can get absolutely screwed over by luck. Like I've shot the two boxes. Um, Edward didn't drop one, Varela box, um, every box in this room, and then coming back, every box and pirate in that room, and still didn't get a yeah, power bomb drop. Yeah, it's it's, it's not likely for that to happen, dude. but it's it, it's happened for sure to like several runners. Yeah. I, uh, always It's always during a marathon setting too. I got kind of screwed over during Calathon. Every, um, every one of these boxes or pirates have a 2 and 7 chance to drop a power bomb. I had one run where I was somehow out of missiles at boost ball, so I couldn't get boost ball, and nothing dropped power bombs. I think early on when I was running this game, I would run out of missiles like around when I was getting fighting the Shigoth. That's terrible. <laughs> so now the, uh, Vemi's uh, scanning these three terminals to deactivate the force field around thermal visor. Um, you think it's a bit of a time loss to get go for this visor, um, but because we're running for in-game time, uh, it's like a couple of seconds at most. It is more significant for RTA though. Yeah, I wonder how fast it is for RTA. It's probably like. Yeah. Uh, it's faster to fight, like have an optimal thermal phase in essence without the thermal visor. That's yeah. really hard though. Yeah, it's it sucks. You have All to right. do that in twenty one percent. It's just awful. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> All right, so. So this is the last bit of the Pendrana cleanup. Uh, we're done. We're done with Pendrana period. Yeah. So now we'll go. Well, to there's Stardis. Yeah, Spider Ball is kind of important, you know. Oh yeah, let's get Spider Ball. Yeah. I got stuck on collision, so I was a little bit scared there. Luckily, I didn't fall. I haven't. I've never even tried going for that strat. I kind of forgot that strat was even a thing. And then this energy tank's free. It's just right there. The only, gotta get that the only run that doesn't get that is Taz. <laughs> so we're not going to fight the artists. Uh, spider Ball is neat, but skipping Spider Ball is pretty easy in all but like well, quote, three, easy. maybe four rooms, but like really it's like two rooms that are actually pretty difficult, 90%. At least difficult to like learn, like learn at first, but... Do you guys think shafts are difficult? Uh, I think they're annoying, but they're not necessarily difficult. Yeah, I struggled with those for so long. I think first shaft's, like, actually a bit challenging, but second shaft is just dumb. You should wait to talk about that when we actually get there. Yeah, yeah, I'm going on a tangent, sorry. Um... So now we're entering Mines Backwards. Yeah. Shout out to Mines Backwards. Because you're not supposed to have- you're not supposed to enter this area first, because... Uh, power bombs are in mines. Yeah, normally, your first power bomb upgrade is in mines itself. But we have power bombs, so we're good. In 100%, you actually get every single power bomb expansion before main power bombs. Yeah, I just realized that when I was learning the route again yesterday. Wait, really? Yeah, yeah you get. Because you, you clean up Fendrana, and then you do Magmar on the way to Chozo. That's and then get actually Chozo. That's so funny. I never realized that. Oh, so, that's Oh, you, you got, like, Oof. you hit the wall or something. That was weird. Yeah, I think she hit the pillar. Pillars in this game really don't like you. Yeah, I'd say take care of this, this turret, because that turret could be problematic. These turrets are stronger than, than the regular turrets. They're a stronger variant. that They're, like, double damage, I think. And they can't be permanently frozen. Yeah, that's an unfortunate part. Alright. Nice. Yeah, that room was kind of being a... That room was probably the worst Normally you just fall down, go through the door, and you're done. Yeah, that's the first time I've messed that up in a while. Oh well. 
So we're gonna skip this uh, elite pirate fight. Uh, we're gonna say hello and then just. Hi. Uh, we're gonna get hi, bye. Give him a back scratch with those oh, face jumps. Oh, do, Mar- do the Mario strat. Oh no! Oh, so what's up the Mario strat? Guy? If you walk off of a ledge holding L, you just have no way to get like. You can't jump. I'm you can't use your space up. jump even walking off. I just do the back strat, I guess. Oh wait, what happens if you walk off the ledge wait, if you're not holding L? Can you do things? Well, you can like no. move, but well, you can you can hold L and then move, but you can't like jump. You can't. Wait, really? I thought yeah, you could. Yeah, if, with... if you fall off the ledge. Pretty sure you're stuck on a trajectory only if you're holding L. No, you're stuck in a trajectory. Period. Uh, okay. Yeah, and Echoes and Corruption is a lot better, which makes it even better for wall crawling. Yeah, because if you could just uh, keep moving if you weren't holding out, we would just do Aether jumping forwards instead of sideways. Yeah, like you just do it off of walls instead of corners. It's kind of nuts, yeah. but that's a... for oh, another day, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna check if this guy has an Ultra, because I need help. They have a pretty good chance of dropping Ultras. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, leap parts are weird. Their their AI will not activate as long as you're to their side. All right, guess uh, how many squares? If you get in their line of sight. Oh yeah, also that was close um, drone. Uh, thirty-two is even possible. Um, <laughs> fifteen. Fifteen. I'm guessing fifteen. Yeah. I'm not gonna guess uh, five. So this is the other good. random part right. of the. Uh, uh, Zlo was actually closest, game. even though he was it, his wasn't even possible. Thirty-nine. Let's um, go. I guess thirty-seven. Well, I guess fifteen afterwards. So never mind. 39 is like just slightly below average. Uh, what happens? So basically, Ooh. this is the other engineering genius uh, David Zoid Kirsch's uh, design here. There's 300 possible mazes. All it's completely random, like which maze you get, and they can be they have to be only odd numbered, and they're between 15 and 55 squares. Uh, the average one is like about 37. Yeah, I'm. I didn't know I'm going really to go to the save station. Yeah, just make the save too because of uh, newborn. I have oh, a safe. I have a different safe to save for that. Oh, uh, okay, okay, that's fine. Also, a funny thing is that um, if you that droid is visible with um, X-ray visor, even yeah. though you can't get X-ray visor in normal play until after you fight the droid. Yeah, you yeah, get, you're not you get, you're not supposed to fight that with uh, X-ray. It makes the fight trivial. I mean, it's still trivial because if you're if you're uh able to get wave buster you just shoot wave buster that's how i did it in my first uh, playthrough i think wait really yeah wave buster will well wave buster homes in on anything without a lock on so i had no idea i always just tried to shoot it with missiles right, um, so... you, you guys uh have just a slight moment for a donation sure. Sure. yeah absolutely yeah sorry this one's kind of crazy i apologize oh <laughs> uh, yeah so we have a we have 30 dollar donation in rail, I believe that's how you say it. I apologize if I am butchering the name. In rail. Uh, no. Uh, no comment. Uh, thank you so much for your donation. All right, back to the run. Sweet. That metro is in a weird spot. So this is like the first room where like the spider skips actually like a little bit oh, kind of weird, but it's not that bad. Oh, bad dash. Not. I'd say just do jump across the platform. Yeah, just jump across the platform. The metro is not in a good spot. What the heck? I was on he a just latched onto you. That was kind of scary, actually. I don't like my power bomb. No, that's a scary part. Yeah, she had, had to drop a power bomb there to kill the Metroid. So with this ghetto jump there, that just completely... Uh, and then what happens is Venmi will dash off of either a Metroid or that missile expansion. And that just skips needing this fireball to make it to that door. Thankfully, I don't, thankfully I'm, don't need a power bomb because of the upcoming trick I'm doing. Um, All right. Yeah, so in two rooms from now, there's a glider that's floating around the top of the room. Um, you can actually use that in order to get out of bounds. Um, I'm going to let Bash and Blow explain this one a bit more because I need to... I'm not a true expert on it. I just know that um, you, can, like, put, you get kind of pushed out of bounds by the glider. Uh, yeah, you I get, tried to you learn get it for a while. I tried to learn it for a while, and um, it looks like the uh, glider carries you. And uh, when it carries you, if you line up perfectly, it just barely clips you out of bounds. And if you walk backwards on, I think it's almost frame perfect of the frame that it um, starts to turn once you hit the wall. It, uh, six frames. Okay, so six frames once it turns. And if you turn within those six frames, it'll clip you out of bounds. 
That's interesting. Oh, wow. And you got it. All right. Awesome. So that's the secret world, but then there's a... There's a infinite boost, so what happens is uh, there's gonna be a wall that's like uh, blocking our way into the like this part of the room and like out of bounds. What happens though is like waves on uh, Vemi needs to transition the room so that the game thinks she's in like the next room, basically the room that's not the, the room with the artifact in it. Then she has to align herself at a certain angle to infinite boost to the wall, so she has to build up enough speed on the wall to uh, clip through. If you're at a bad angle, you could potentially soft lock and get stuck. And then there's just a ghetto jump just, just to get the artifact. Safe save. Yeah, luckily we have a safety save. Because... Yeah, overall though, this is actually like pretty good. Yeah. And I then... believe there's two soft locks. So lock there's another position? Yeah, so there's another uh infinite boost the that then you'll have to do. Yeah. Hopefully. As long as you have the right, right angle, you should be good. Oh nice, good. got it. Nice, nice. Nice. Yeah, I was like, yeah, look, the angle looked good. So, yeah, so that's the hardest trick in any percent called early newborn. Um, it saves about uh, 40 seconds, I think, over killing, uh, getting phase on suit, then coming back. Um, I personally do not do this trick. It's, it's. I think only like four people in four, the community two, do it. T3 it's you, Edson, T3, and Justin. No, Edson doesn't do it. Oh, no, no, Edson doesn't, doesn't even do it. He's learning it, sorry. Yeah, I uh, I've been trying to learn it, but I got so distracted with twenty one. Yeah, this 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 is a really hard, really hard trick. Yeah, it's the positioning more than the angle. Yeah, if it wasn't for this, for like a completely inbounds run, which by the way, this run can be done completely inbounds oh, I can't without do changing the route much. That's ah, not a big deal. You can you, the troopers are pretty trivial, even power ones. Watch as you get like a power bomb drop from one of them though. So this is Omega Pirate. I don't know if you want to. You can explain the fight if you want to, uh, the enemy. Yeah, I'll explain it. Um, so, basically this Omega Pirate acts the same way as Elite Pirate, so I, he hasn't seen me yet, so he's just gonna turn around like an idiot. Yeah, cut, skipping the cutscene is really important, actually, for this. Hopefully we get, like, Plasma or Ice. Okay, that's good. These troops really good, are really annoying. Good. And... Yeah, so with, like, Elite Pirates, what happens is, like, as long as you, like, stay to their side and you don't get in their line of sight, they'll never, like, activate their AI. Alright, hold on, let me explain this real quick. Oh, yeah, sorry. So, um, Omega Pirate will spawn in the pool furthest away from you and not spawn in the same pool twice. You can actually manipulate exactly where he will. Yeah, so because he was just in that far pool on the, to Vemi's left, um, she's gonna stand next to a pool that's behind her, and so now the pirate spawns right in front of her. Oh, but yeah. the reason we need X-ray though is because of this fight. Yeah, you cannot damage Omega Pirate without X-ray visor. It's the only thing that works. And this fight's like just totally like it's just crazy to cheese it. Like or not cheese it, just um, manipulate it. How consistent the fight is. Like four fully charged plasma shots, even like six fully charged work, six and then the power bomb is just faster. Yeah. Six fully charged plasma shots will be um, Yeah, it, OP has like. Only 600 health, which is very low for a boss. Yeah. Thardis and Flogger, on the other hand, have 2,000. Ridley has like 2,600, I think. Yeah, Ridley has 2,600. 2,000 in the ground phase. Yeah. No, 2,000 in the air phase, I think. Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, that's right. Because it doesn't have as much health. So, so this, so because we got really newborn, we can just go straight up and leave the room without having to backtrack. Look. <laughs> It's been a pretty solid run so far, besides yeah, some of the scan dashing troubles. Hey, early newborn went well, that's all I can do. Yeah, all the wall crawls went pretty well, besides like the little bit of shakiness in that one room in IBF. But I mean, I'm horrible at IBF, so I have, I have no reason to... Yeah, the cutscene gets confused when you pick up a phase on suit, and it's, it tries to show the next suit in order. Yeah. Um. So it shows the gravity suit because you haven't gotten it yet. Um, I've been wondering if we're gonna skip this elite pirate fight again. By the way, yeah, there's a there's a small space you can actually uh, squeeze in between and actually skip that entire there's a tire there. Yeah, it's like this big rectangle that's just narrow enough. 
I've been wondering if uh um... I did not get a single missile drop from the Oh that sucks. That's <laughs> yeah, you want you want twenty four missiles for this upcoming uh elite pirate that you have to kill for an artifact. Alright, so the fact that I could do just our uh, instant unmorphing is gonna be very useful in this one. Yeah. Um for this is like the technically hardest along these ones. Sorry. Um so what a bomb space jump is basically you have twenty one frames upon leaving the ground to uh jump in midair basically. And what I can do is get on this platform and then get stuck along the side of the spider track. Come up. That was skipping, really good. Skipping nice. spider ball on that room. And then this room, you just stand on a bunch of different spots. Or basically on a diff bunch of different standable spots. Yeah. I'd argue that the second shaft is the harder shaft to learn. But, um, once you get them down, the first shaft becomes the harder shaft. Yeah, the first shaft actually has, like, several, like, components going into it that are all kind of challenging. There's the BSJ, then you have to land on the specific collision that's pretty precise. Oh, by the way, the we're second one's just a dumb rock. A wall here. Yeah, this yeah, is a so rock we're wall. Just gonna boost through this wall. That's Calvin. Oh, this guy's horrible. Calvin is. You so don't want to fall down. And then uh, Vemi's just dispatching some enemies here just to save on lag. Um, the pause there is to quickly switch to a uh, power beam. And again, we're just strafing the uh, this phase on elite pirate here, so that uh, by staying out of the line of sight, it just won't attack you at all. Oh, that's the pirate data. Ah, oh, come on. Let's go pirate data. Pirate data, scan log, let's go. 200% win. So this Chozo artifact here is the only reason we uh, come back. But uh, I don't think we ever explained it. Um, they don't really do much in terms of progression. All they do is you need all 12 to unlock the last level in the game. Unlike needing to like say fight four bosses in Super Metroid, it's just collecting these items. Yeah. Otherwise, they're completely useless. They have no bearing on, like, the plot, really. Or, or like, art, away. yeah. Who knows, man? If that's even ever... If that's ever a thing, that'll be incredible. I got dibs on it. <laughs> Alright, so you're supposed to do this extremely slow puzzle. Um, utilizing Spider-Ball. However, I don't have Spider-Ball. And even this if I did have Spider-Ball, I still wouldn't do this puzzle. <laughs> Yeah, again, we're just abusing just cl standable collision here. Uh, that last jump is like kind of the, the hardest or more the most precise one. It's not that bad, but it's just it's just dumb. Unlike the uh, two spiderless shafts that, uh, for like a beginner, I'd say it's worth just fighting Thardis and just uh, not having to do the spiderless shafts. Yeah. Also, Steve's awesome. not having to do the the ghetto and dash strat and uh, Metroid quarantine. Uh, that's phase on mines leaving through the front entrance. Heck yeah. Yeah, so it's like, hey, welcome to phase on mines. Oh, bye. Yeah, every major like region has, besides like, I think Talon has a, like this cutscene that happens in the first like big room. And uh, thanks to like this routing here, we're basically done with uh, all the items we need. There's one more artifact we have to collect. Well, technically two, but one's in the actual artifact sample which we need to go to anyways yeah um yeah luckily with uh this routing the final uh artifact that isn't at uh basically world um is super convenient because it's only like two rooms away yeah it's hardly um, even a detour it's like almost on the way yeah i guess you could say it's three rooms if you really want to be nitpicky about it yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's fine either way. So, yeah. Because um, we have to go into Chozo just to take the other elevator and skip the pirate frigate. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to L lock Spring Space Jump my way over there. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hard agree. Nice. Nice. All right. If... <laughs> nice boosting. All right. Uh, if this scan dash is actually happening, then this is like one of my favorite tricks. Oh, no, it's a boost strat. Okay. I do a scan dash off one of the stone toads. That, that I learned it from one of Jack's videos. Alright. 
So there's a trigger here that, to activate a ghost fight. What I'm going to do is jump over that and land on this peg. And then just hit this bomb. Now what I need to do is I need to unmorph onto the peg and dash over. So I'm going to try to do that. Yeah, this skip is not over yet. Ah, oh, I didn't get it. Oh, no. It's all because you didn't outlock spring space, jump the first part. <laughs> So this this ghost fight is the main point of doing the, that for that wall crawl when we got ice beam. Um, otherwise, if you do it inbound, you have to fight this chosen ghost anyways. So you're saving like up to 40 seconds, I think. It saves 20 seconds to. Uh, 20 seconds, skip, sorry. It saves like 20 seconds to skip this. See so that's auto lane there. And then the wall what? crawl itself saves like 10, 15. I like that cutscene overlap. I keep forgetting I do that cutscene overlap, so I do different movement there. At least even if you feel ghost skip, you don't have to deal with the three chosen ghosts that spawn in this room if you do it inbounds. Yeah, the only reason you need to you deal with the three chosen ghosts inbounds is because you hit the thing wave beam. Yeah, you have to shoot a wave slot to exit the room, otherwise you have to do this uh, trick called an HBJ, which... I don't know if it's um, faster, just a I lot just... harder to do, or what. Yeah. This go jump I... sucks. I know it would probably be faster. Slope jump is required. Yeah. I know it would probably be uh, faster to do the triple bomb jump to the thing, but I don't know if the HBJ is that much faster. So yeah, that's it for uh, item collection. We're done. We can go straight to uh, Artifact Temple and fight Ridley. The room is called Artifact Temple, by the way. Um, That's the longest same, load time of the game. Talking about uh, the possible, like what we need to be there for an artifact skip. Yeah, the way that the game tracks, like when the artifact can open or when the Ridley fight oh happens, is there's like twelve layers individually that that uh, uh they they have like a value assigned to them. And it's whether or not you have an art, uh, artifact collected, and then what happens is there's like this count there's like this uh this number counter thing in the room that will count down every time there's an artifact that you collect so once that reaches zero then it sort of sends a relay to uh another part of the room saying hey we have all the artifacts let's uh start the ridley fight or you can fight ridley now so yeah sort of like arbitrary code execution if that was ever found in this game um all right so i'm gonna do a dash to try to get across Oh yeah, here we go. Hardest trick in the run. I actually have no idea Oops. how to do this trick. <laughs> nice! Was like, nine, no time lost though, it's in-game time. Heck yeah. That was solid. Woo! Yeah, this ship dash is actually not that bad of a dash, it's just a bit of a precise... You need to have a good enough height to reach the other side of the room. This you just basically the, bend forward to R dash. This is probably the single most cutscene like that everyone wishes we could skip. Yeah. The impact crater one. I really hate it more in randos because you go to this room normally like one one of the first rooms you get you get to for, uh, uh, check for an item. Um, now that you say that, I think that it's uh, you should have drawn logs. I was drawn trying to draw ASFP considering <laughs> more, what what this uh, marathon's uh, raising money for. Oops. Hey. But that's to them because that was really, really bad drawing. <laughs> I should have practiced that. Yeah, that should have been the practice. Forget uh forget flyby skip. Forget a uh, ENB. So this is Ridley. Uh don't blink. Actually, it's it's a bit longer to fight than that, but uh don't blink too much. Yeah. There's one point where you don't where you shouldn't blink. Alright, so an interesting thing about Boost Ball, if I can actually manage to get this right while in midair, or while he's in midair, um, Boost Ball actually deals 50,000 damage per frame, and for some reason it works on Ridley. For most yeah, they bosses, forgot to... it doesn't work, but for Ridley it does. And only on his aerial state. Yeah, not they, on the ground They state. patched it in player's choice, right? No. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. Holy moly. Yeah, so we just completely skipped the air phase. If his ground phase was also vulnerable, 
then this fight would be over. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, the ground phase is immune to boost ball. I thought it was a frame perfect trick. What, fly by skip? Yeah. That's not fly by skip. That's, I mean, that's just a faster variant of getting him back because it, it makes it a cutscene instead of uh, you being in control. So this ground oh, phase. Yeah, is you can do it. So much this one. Yeah, so because we skip right straight the ground phase, the ground phase is a much is the much faster phase in the fight. Much more consistent. Uh, we have a nice missile strat here that just uh, makes killing very or fast. As long as you get uh, good luck with him just opening his mouth so you can get stunned. I, I and that's really <laughs> Yeah, the air phase is notorious for taking a long time. Um, because he, he, he'll constantly be like, you know, swooping into attack, and then he'll just like, sort of fly away where you can't hit him. Yeah, boost ball skips all of that because it deals a ridiculous amount of damage. And that phase accounts for like, three quarters of his health, almost. So it's just nasty, so the fact that you can skip it by just boosting into his chest is a, it's so great. Oh yeah, I'm not looking forward to that in 21%. No charge beam. God dang it. It's really more annoying than it's bad. It's pretty easy to... Unless you, like, it, unfor you unfortunately like, get hit by a bunch of stuff at once. Like, I didn't find it too bad. Yeah. Plus, you get that nice save station right here. So this is Impact Crater. Last level in the game. Yeah, so... There actually is a way to skip uh, the final boss EXO in this that's coming up. Unfortunately, it is not really uh, consistent right now, so it will not be shown. But it was actually recently found how to get out of bounds in the next room. Yeah, this is the newest, like, skip that was discovered for the game by, uh, by just uh, someone that was just randomly glitch hunting. It was crazy. GD Vertigo. Shouts to him. He's awesome. Yeah. He knows a little... He's like... So this is the fight that it skips, uh, the first of the two final bosses. So, um, there are four phases, and each one, um, EXO, or Metro Prime EXO will have a certain beam color. And so in the first, uh, sub-chamber, uh, she will be either Power or Wave. Um, in the second sub-chamber will be Power or Wave Ice. In the third sub-chamber will be Power or Wave Ice Plasma, once each. And then the final one is, uh, Red. The final one's always great. Um, potentially there might be some skippable games in the future. However, um, it is definitely um, not possible right now. The only way that I could think of skipping beams would be if uh, artifact skip was discovered, then skipping wave right. beam. Wave beam would be the easiest. Yeah, I think wave beam is the closest to being able to be completely skipped, but uh, right now it can't be. Plasma will never be skipped. Yeah, plasma's needed for A, because you need to use it to get through some rooms to be able to access the exoskip. Good luck getting, uh, good luck. Oh, wait. Yeah, you do need ice for plasma. So. Well, you won't need it unless. You, if you do, like, a mag. Like, a burning trail secret world, you don't even need any beam to get plasma. No, you need ice to get out. No, to get out, you need plasma. Ice? No, you need plasma to get out of the plasma process. Oh, that's right. You're right. You're right. Never Every beam room requires the, its own beam to get out. You're, you're right, I forgot about that. It's nice if you soft lock during a rando. So, Exo has like a bunch of attacks that he usually does, but uh, what Vimy does is like, while it's not doing this thing where it's charging at you in between each phase, um, by staying close enough to it, Exo will always do this uh, uh, melee attack. And it keeps it from doing other attacks like spawning orbs and stuff like that that can slow you down. Sometimes I forget about what torque is where. Also, the order of beams that it, that, that it uses um, is random. Is random, and you you ideally want wave beam to not be your first one. You kind of want like ice or plasma before wave beam too. That way you can just sort of skip the wave beam phase entirely. Yeah, because what you can do is you can actually uh, um, snipe X snipe X is what I've been doing. So yeah, as it charges. Right oh, sorry. Here. Yeah, Exit is definitely one of the uh, most. Beautiful. It's a technical boss fight, and the hitbox to actually hit it is pretty small. Yeah. Because, like, most of its body, your shots will just 
reflect off of it instead. Yeah, nothing's worse than having your shots constantly reflect back at you. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing that sucks about Wave Beam is that Wave Beam itself is actually like a pretty weak weapon. Uh, when fully charged, it's actually the weakest of your four beams. Yeah. The Just... uh, homing is nice though for this fight. Yeah, it is. It, is. it makes the, that phase at least a consistent, oh, even if you don't. That. Yeah, and every time Exo like charges at you, there's like a second window or so. It's a pretty lenient window where you can still damage it. So that allows you to take care of uh, other phases of like other other beam phases faster. With yeah. plasma and ice, it's really good because they do a lot of damage. This sun chamber. This sun chamber. Oh uh, yeah. So this is an example of, like what it, can, <laughs> it doing like Metroid Prime doing whatever it wants in the fourth sun chamber. It can just change beam phases at will. Like just. So it's, yeah. yeah, it's definitely. Not It'll really randomly speed super. up too, which is also annoying. It'll also randomly charge sometimes. Yeah. That's only with plasma. That sucks during like 21%. Is it only with plasma? Huh. No, I thought it randomly charges with any beam. That's right. Uh, any color. So really? each one has a yeah. Each one has an effect. So for example, oh. um, power is uh, grapple. I believe wave is. Um, I know that the wave beam makes it so you can't lock onto it. What? No, oh, like a... you're talking about. I, it... I think you're talking about like it'll only do a certain action with one of the beam phases of subject before. I didn't realize isn't that was the case. The... Yeah, isn't ice the wave is uh, beam? poisonous. Yeah. We're not talking about the like beam the weapon mortar. it fires. We're talking about what it's attacking you. Yeah, I know. I'm saying it's the mortars, right? Where it like leans over and shoots like a ton of missiles oh. in the air and mortar you. That could be it. I, that's I didn't realize it was correlated with a beam color. I thought it just did whatever it wanted. No. What about the All speed right. up then? Is that, that, was, that tied that to ice sloppy, or something? Or? There was Exo. Um, we're coming up towards the end of the game now. We've got about two minutes left. Ready to see that fresh 53? Okay, let's go. It isn't even close. <laughs> I want to know what the final time is. <laughs> Probably like 101. So this is the second and the final boss fight of the game, Metroid Prime Essence. Alright, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just waiting for her to decide where she's gonna land pool. This is not the best spot. Is Metroid Prime female? I have no idea. Yes. That's crazy. Found that out from Clarice a while ago. Well, do we know that? We know Dark Samus is technically. That's another. That's another discussion. Oh come Boss on. fight time. Oh, you suck. Yeah, the one part of the fight is. Uh, All right, she's fine. I'll, I'll stop talking. I'll rather have to defend me so it's funny. So what I'm doing is called um, basically action or action canceling and leaking. attack canceling. Attack canceling. Nope, that wasn't okay. Yeah, if Metroid Prime is close enough to like the exoskeleton corpse, it'll not lay a pool and just change phases. All right, this is gonna be one of three now. <laughs> Oof. But what normally Essence does is it has a set number of attacks it does before it'll lay a pool. And so what happens is if you shoot Essence, um, and it'll, it'll have like this knockback animation it always does, and then immediately after that animation ends, it'll do its next, its next attack immediately as opposed to waiting. And so you can just have it go through its queue of attacks or movements or whatever it wants to do, and then just have it immediately lay a pool right when you're still shooting it. So it's a very optimal way of uh, dealing with Metroid Prime. Yeah, so we shoot it right as it's about to do an action. Yeah, it's luckily a uh, pretty consistent timing. It has a sound cue. It's about once a second. It's a visual cue too, I think, when its eyes like start to glow. So now we just got another pool right after we uh, finished the first or the other pool we just to shoot it. Yeah, the cue I always used was uh, when the sound like kind of. Alright, we're coming out on time. Yeah, get ready on time, by the way. So this third strat, uh, by stepping in out of the pool, we can actually fire the phase on the beam without using any of the ammo in the pool. And so it extends the amount of uh, of damage we can output to time. The, uh, Metroid Prime. Good job, good job. And that's how you deal with Essence quickly. Alright, what is, what, is what is the final time end up being? 
It's like a 123 14. 123 <laughs> Oof. Well, you set your estimate pretty lower. I usually do like 10 minutes because I'm not confident. <laughs> yeah, I set it 126. You got, a, you got a tight estimate here. Yeah, I ended up getting a 59 minute practice run. Oh, nice. Actually, it really wasn't that bad of a run. No, this wasn't, this wasn't terrible. It was honestly just a bunch of small, like, time losses that stacked up a bit. Yeah, yeah. so a lot at, of bad luck. at the end of the run, whatever it does, we wait for the in-game time. Uh, again, this game is run early time based on in-game time. Also watch, Samus will just quickly change from Varia to Gravity Suit yep. here. Weird. Even though I never had Gravity Suit. That's because you stored it in the ship, Missa, don't you remember? Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Just this thing called fast credits just hold down and What's the emote again? It's fixed yeah. credits. Fixed credits, credits. It's, that's it. It's literally just a picture of an analog stick being pointed down. <laughs> so good. I feel like Metroid Prime's like FFZ emotes are like top tier. Yeah. yeah. We're just gonna check the in-game time and then um, we'll, we'll cut. So, we'll take your guess. I'm gonna say based on that time, 102. 111. Uh, I think it's like a 102 or 103. Yeah, probably like a 104. I'm gonna say 102. Yep, 102. Hey. hey. All right, not bad for a marathon run. I'll take it. Um, but yeah, Still faster than you by a long um, shot. Really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was and a lot of fun. Thank, thank you, Bash. Thank you, Zlow, um, for yeah, no joining problem. me on commentary. And, you know, thank you for everyone who has you know contributed to this game. Um, thanks, you thanks for playing this learn, game a lot better than me. If you want to learn Metroid Prime, we do have a community Discord. You know, just send me a message and I can uh, get you guys an invite. Um, you know, message me on Twitch, Twitter, um, anywhere there, or that. Go to that. Yeah, Discord. we have a hot link. Uh, Discord.me slash Metroid Prime. Yep. It's also on the speedrun.com slash MP. There's like a Discord button you can click. Yep. That. And yeah, that's about it. So again, thank you guys.